Firstly, click on subscribe to subscribe to the channel. Alyus Ganaba Sanjo was a Nigerian political and military leader who served as Nigeria's head of state from 1976 to 1979. In this section we make a look into his military career and his administration as a military head of state of Nigeria. Abasanjo was born in 5 of March, 1937. In 1958, he enlisted in the Nigerian army. He was then sent to a regular officer's training school at Teshi in Ghana. When stationed abroad, he sent letters and presents to his fiancée in Nigeria. In September 1958, he was selected for six months of additional training at Mons Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, Southern England. At Mons, he received a commission and a certificate in engineering. While Abasanjo was in England, his mother died. His father then died a year later. In 1959 Abasanjo returned to Nigeria. He was posted to Kaduna as an infantry subaltern with the 5th Battalion. His time in Kaduna was the first time that Abasanjo lived in a Muslim-majority area. He was there in October 1960 that Nigeria became an independent country. Shortly after, the 5th Battalion were sent to the Congo as part of a United Nations peacekeeping force. There, the battalion were stationed in Kivu province, with their headquarters at Ukavu. In the Congo, Abasanjo and others were responsible for protecting civilians, including Belgian settlers, against soldiers who had revolt against Patrice Lumumba's government. In February 1961, Abasanjo was captured by the mutineers while he was evacuating Roman Catholic missionaries from a station near Bukavu. The mutineers considered executing him, but were ordered to release him. In May 1961, the 5th Battalion left the Congo and returned to Nigeria. During the conflict, he had been appointed a temporary captain. On his return, Abasanjo bought his first car, he was transferred to the Army Engineering Corps. In 1962 he was stationed at the Royal College of Military Engineering in England. After returning to Nigeria, he took command of the Field Engineering Squadron based at Kaduna. Within the military, he became a major in 1965. Abasanjo was sent to India to study. Abasanjo flew back to Nigeria in January 1966 to find the country in the midst of a military coup led by Chikwuma Kadun Nziagwu and Emmanuel Ifejuna. Almost all of those involved in organizing the coup were for the Igbo people of southern Nigeria. Abasanjo was among those warning that the situation could descend into civil war. As the coup failed, Alyusgan met Aransi in Lagos. Aransi soon ended federalism in Nigeria through his unification decree in May 1966, something which inflamed ethnic tensions. In late July, a second coup took place. In Ibadan, troops of northern Nigerian origin rebelled and killed Aransi. While this coup was taking place, Abasanjo was in Maijaguri. Hearing of it, he quickly returned to Kaduna. There, he found that northern troops from the 3rd Battalion were rounding up, torturing, and killing Igbo soldiers. The governor of northern Nigeria, Hassan Katsina, recognized that although Alyusgun was not Igbo, as a southerner he was still in danger from the mutinous troops. To protect them, he sent Alyusgun and his wife back to Maijaguri for 10 days while the violence abated. After this, Abasanjo sent his wife to Lagos while returning to Kaduna himself, where he remained until January 1967. At that time, he was the most senior Yoruba officer present in the north. In January 1967, Abasanjo was posted to Lagos as the chief army engineer. Tensions between the Igbo and northern ethnic groups continued to grow, and in May the Igbo military officer Siajamegwu Ajukwu declared the independence of Igbo majority areas in the southeast, forming the Republic of Biafra. On 3 July, Nigeria's government posted Abasanjo to Ibadan to serve as commander of the western state. Abasanjo was then appointed the rear commander of Murtala Muhammad's 2nd Division, which was operating in the Midwest. Based at Ibadan, Abasanjo was responsible for ensuring that the 2nd Division was kept supplied. In the city, Abasanjo taught a course in military science at the University of Ibadan and built his contacts in the Yoruba elite. During the war, there was popular unrest in the western state, and to avoid responsibility for these issues, Abasanjo resigned from the western state executive council. 
After the war, Goen's government made Abasanjo responsible for reintegrating Biafra into Nigeria, in which position he earned respect for emphasizing magnanimity. As an engineer, he emphasized restoration of the water supply. By May 1970 all major towns in the region were reconnected to the water supply. Abasanjo's role in ending the war made him a war hero and a nationally known figure in Nigeria. After the overthrow of Yakubu Goen, General Murtala Muhammad became the head of state. In January 1976, Abasanjo and Anjuma were promoted to the ranks of lieutenant general. In February 1976, Colonel Buka Suka Dimka launched a coup against Nigeria's government, during which General Murtala Muhammad was assassinated. An attempt was also made on Abasanjo's life, but the wrong individual was killed. Dimka lacked widespread support among the military and his coup failed, forcing him to flee. Abasanjo did not attend Murtala's funeral in Kano, but declared that the government would finance construction of a mosque on the burial site. After the assassination, Abasanjo attended a meeting of the Supreme Military Council. He expressed his desire to resign from government, but the council successfully urged him to replace Murtala as head of state. Abasanjo moved into the Dodan Barracks 81, while 39 people accused of being part of Dimka's coup were executed, generating accusations that Abasanjo's response was excessive. As head of state, Abasanjo vowed to continue Murtala's policies. Aware of the danger of alienating northern Nigerians, Abasanjo brought General Shehu Yurajua as his replacement and second-in-command as chief of staff. Many wondered why Abasanjo, as a Yoruba and a Christian, had appointed Yurajua, a member of the northern aristocracy, as his second-in-command rather than a fellow Yoruba Christian. Abasanjo emphasized national concerns over those of the regions. He encouraged both children and adults to recite the new national pledge and the national anthem. Interested in getting a broader range of perspectives, each Saturday he held an informal seminar on a topical issue to which people other than politicians and civil servants were invited. Among those whose advice he sought were Islamic scholars and traditional chiefs. In the subsequent two years of Abasanjo's government, Nigeria borrowed a further $4,983 million. Nigeria was undergoing nearly 3% annual population growth during the 1970s, something which would double the country's population in just over 25 years. Abasanjo later noted that he was unaware of this at the time, with his government having no policy on population control. Nigeria's population growth contributed to rapid urbanization and an urban housing shortage. To deal with this, Abbas Anjo's 1976 budget outlined plans for the construction of 200,000 new housing units by 1980, although ultimately only 28,500 were built. In 1976 Abbas Anjo's government also announced rent and price controls. To counteract the disruption of labor strikes, in 1976 Abasanjo's government introduced legislation that defined most major industries as essential services, banned strikes within them, and authorized the detention of disruptive union leaders. In 1978 it merged 42 unions into the single Nigerian Labor Congress. The oil industry remained an important part of Nigeria's economy, and under Abasanjo the Ministry of Petroleum Resources was merged with the Nigerian National Oil Corporation to form the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. Abasanjo also supported the creation of a liquefaction plant at Bani, which was 62% financed by the NNPC. The project was abandoned by his successor amid spiraling cost increases. Abasanjo was eager to establish Nigeria as a prominent leader in Africa, and under his tenure its influence in the continent increased. He revived Goen's plan to hold the Second World Black and African Festival of Arts and Culture in Nigeria. It took place in Lagos in February 1977, although domestic critics argued that it was too expensive. Abasanjo gave low priority to the economic community of West African states, the COAS, and angered many of its Francophone members after insisting that, as the largest financial contributor to the organization, Nigeria should host the organization's headquarters in Lagos. Relations with nearby Ghana also declined. In 1979, Nigeria cut off oil supplies to the country to protest the execution of political opponents by Jerry Rawlings' new military junta. 
Under Abbasanjo, Nigeria loosened its long-standing ties with the United Kingdom and aligned more closely with the United States. Abbasanjo was favorable to the U.S. government of Jimmy Carter, who was elected in 1976 because of Carter's commitment to ensuring majority rule across southern Africa. As head of state, Abbasanjo attended OAU summits. At that held in July 1977, he proposed the formation of a standing committee to mediate disputes between OAU member states. At the 1978 conference, he warned of interference from both sides in the Cold War. At the next conference, he urged the formation of a pan-African military which could engage in peacekeeping efforts on the continent. To promote Nigeria's role internationally, Abasanjo involved himself in various mediation efforts across Africa. On behalf of the OAU, Abasanjo held a conference at Kano to mediate the Chadian civil war. Several factions agreed to a ceasefire, to form a government of national unity, and to allow Nigerian troops to act as peacekeepers. The war nevertheless continued and Nigeria responded by cutting off its oil supply to Chad. A second conference on the conflict took place in Lagos in August 1979, resulting in the formation of another short-lived transitional government. In the final year of his military government, he headed an OAU mission to resolve the conflict in Western Sahara. The military government has assembled a constituent drafting committee to devise a new constitution which could be used amid a transfer to civilian rule. The committee argued that Nigeria should change its governance system, which was based on the British parliamentary system, to one based on the US presidential system whereby a single elected president would be both head of state and head of government. To avoid this president becoming a dictator, it argued for various checks on their power, including a federal structure whereby independent elected institutions would exist at the federal, state, and local level. The draft constitution was published in October 1976 and debated in public for the following year. A constituent assembly met to discuss the draft in October 1977. The assembly deadlocked over what role to give Sharia law in the constitution. Abbasanjo called the assembly together and warned them of the social impact of their decision, urging them to take a more conciliatory attitude. In September 1978, the Supreme Military Council announced the new constitution. It had made several amendments to the version put forward by the Constituent Assembly. Along with the new constitution, Abbasanjo lifted the ban on political parties. A variety of groups then formed to compete in the ensuing election, most notably the Unity Party of Yoruba, the Nigerian People's Party, and the National Party of Nigeria. Abbasanjo was angered that many of the politicians were making promises that they could not keep. The elections took place over the course of July and August 1979. Turnout was low, at between 30 and 40 percent of legally registered voters, and there was rigging on various sides, although it was peaceful. There was debate as to who won the presidential vote, and Abbasanjo refused to adjudicate, insisting that the Electoral Commission take on that role. They declared that Shehu Shigari was the winner, something that the runner-up, Abafemi Olowo, unsuccessfully challenged at the Supreme Court. Shigari took office in October 1979. At his inauguration ceremony, Abasanjo presented Shigari with a copy of the new constitution. This marked the start of Nigeria's Second Republic. That is all for today's video, thank you for watching, goodbye.